package. So we're going to have a bit of a bit of a talk about oxidation numbers and electronegativity. Okay. So what we're going to do this is first we're going to look at a basic uh, basic molecule, molecular structure. Okay. So we're going to look at water. Pretty straightforward. We all know what water looks like. So we've got oxygen there, two hydrogens, like so. Okay. And we know that because this, is a because this is a molecular compound, this line here represents a covalent bond. Okay, we know that covalent bonds are just the sharing of two electrons, okay? So we know that covalent bonds are the sharing of two electrons, okay? And because of that, we can redraw this. We can draw, redraw each of these bonds as two little dots, okay, to represent the two electrons. So we do a dot there, dot there. Dot here and a dot here and a hydrogen there. Okay, so these covalent bonds are equivalent to a pair of electrons, okay, because we know that a covalent bond is basically the sharing of electrons between the atoms involved. So here the oxygen atom and the hydrogen atom are sharing electrons, and I've drawn these electrons here. Okay, now some of you may have noticed is that these these two electrons here are slightly closer. I've drawn them slightly closer to the oxygen atom than to the hydrogen atom. Okay, and this is because the oxygen basically has a, a higher tendency to attract electrons towards it, okay? And this property of the oxygen atom is what we call its electronegativity, okay? So the oxygen is more electronegative than the hydrogen atom, okay? And for that reason, it attracts the electrons more than the hydrogen atom. And these electrons end up slightly closer to the oxygen atom than the hydrogen atom, okay? So what we see as a result, now, this, this electronegativity is a property of, you know, every atom on the periodic table. Every atom has kind of an electronegativity that can kind of be measured or compared, okay? And what we know is that we know that electronegativity increases as we move in this direction of the periodic table and as we move up, okay? So basically, if we want a more sort of concise way of putting this, electronegativity increases in this direction, okay? So up here is most electronegative, and down here is the least electronegative. Okay? So this electronegativity is a property of, you know, every element. Okay? So it, what this does is this electronegativity and the fact that this electronegativity increases in this direction, uh, it allows us to, uh, to calculate oxidation numbers, so something called an oxidation number. Okay? An oxidation number is basically, it's kind of a few things, okay? It's basically... So if an atom were an ion, what would be its charge? Okay. So if an atom were an ion, what would its charge be? You know, say we have a molecule. There's no ions in this water molecule, say. But if we consider the oxygen atom or the hydrogen atom to be an ion, then we have we ask ourselves, what would its charge be? Okay. And the answer to that question is what we call the oxidation number. So if an atom were an ion... What would its charge be? Okay, so this is kind of a bit of a you know odd-looking question. Okay, but what we're doing when they, when we're assigning uh, oxidation numbers to uh, to the atoms in an element is we're basically looking at every every element, sorry, not the atoms in an element, to the atoms in a molecule or any sort of compound is we're looking at the atoms in the element. So here we have H2O. Okay, and we're saying, you know, so this, this is a molecule. It has a net charge of zero. But if each atom were an ion, then what would the charge of each atom be? Okay. And so, you know, if we ask ourselves that question, then we're saying, if each atom were an ion, what would its charge be? Then we know that, you know, if each atom were an ion, okay, and this H2O compound had a net charge of zero, then we know that the sum of all the charges of these so-called ions would have to equal zero. So we'll say the sum of the oxidation numbers is equal to the charge, okay? And in this case, the charge is zero. 
So we'll play zero. But that's only relevant to this situation, okay? So the sum of the oxidation numbers, that's what I've tried to write here, maybe successfully or unsuccessfully, you can decide. But I've tried to write that the sum of the oxidation numbers is equal to the charge of the compound, the net charge. So oxidation numbers are something are a, sort of a property of each atom in the compound. Okay, and the net charge is the charge on the whole compound, okay, the, on the whole thing. Okay, and so what we do when we're trying to decide the oxidation numbers, okay, we sort of have two kind of conditions or rules that we follow, okay. The first one is that we assign, so we assign an oxidation number So we assign an oxidation number to the most Okay, I'm going to write E neg instead of electronegativity. What I mean here is E neg, sorry, electroneg to the most electronegative element. Okay, so in this case, sorry, assign the oxidation number to the most electronegative element first. That's the key word. Okay, so when we're given a compound and we're told to assign oxidation numbers to each of the elements in the compound, we look for the most for the most uh, electronegative element, okay, in this case oxygen. Okay, we know that because oxygen is here on the periodic table, hydrogen is here. Okay, so obviously looking at this arrow, uh, we have oxygen being more electronegative. Okay, so we assign the oxidation number to oxygen first, okay? And we know that the question is, if an atom were an iron, what would its charge be? Well, oxygen forms, forms an oxide iron, which is O2 minus. Okay, so the oxygen oxidation number is minus two. Okay, and you may notice that I've written, you know, the, the charge on an iron, we write the number, then the sign. Here I've written the sign, then the number. Uh, we do that to eliminate confusion, so we don't get confused between an oxidation number, which, uh, which it's important to know, is just a tool. Okay, it doesn't represent anything anything real or anything sort of significant in terms of, um, you know, the real structure. It, it has a slight, you know, slight significance in terms of the electrons drifting towards the oxygen in this case, but it's really just a tool for us uh, when we come to redox reactions, which we'll deal with a little bit later on in a different video. Okay, but it's just a tool. And so we get, we don't want to get confused between this tool, this oxidation number, and this actual charge on an ion, which is a, a really significant property. Okay, so we, for that reason, we reverse the number in the sign. Okay, and so we've said we've assigned the oxidation number to the most electronegative element first, that electronegative element being oxygen. So we've assigned minus two, and we know that the sum of the oxidation numbers has to equal the net charge. Okay, and really, this is basically condition number two. Okay, I've written it in the wrong color there. I've written it in a slightly different color, but this is condition number two. Okay, okay. And so for that reason, we know that we've got two hydrogens here, Know that hydrogens are in group one. They like to form protons or hydrogen ions, H plus. Okay, so that works out really well. Okay, so if we give each of these hydrogens an oxidation number of plus one, okay, and we have two of them, that gives us the total oxidation, the sum of the oxidation numbers therefore is plus one, plus one minus two equals zero. Okay, and that works according that that satisfies this rule. Okay, so that's basically the two steps we follow. We assign the oxidation number to the most electronegative element first. Okay, we do that based on whatever ion this electronegative element likes to form. Okay, and then the next step, this isn't so much a step, but the rest, the next step is to therefore we assign the rest of them. Uh, you know, continuing to sort of do the most electronegative elements sort of first in order of their electronegativity. Okay, so we do the most electronegative element first, and then we continue to do the, the, the rest of the elements such that their oxidation numbers equal the net charge of the compound. Okay, so that's really crucial. So here we have a neutral molecule. We know that molecules have no charge, and so therefore all of the oxidation numbers of the three atoms in this, in this, uh, in this molecule have to sum to zero. Okay, and one more condition, I guess I'm going to write this as three. Okay, and I'll put it in brackets because it's not really a step to calculate your oxidation numbers, but it is, it kind of give you a bit of a guideline, okay? The maximum oxidation number
of an element any element that is is equal to its group number okay and so you know, traditionally the group numbers are one to eight okay and so not every you know in here this is a bit of a bit of a no-go zone when it comes to group numbers okay in here okay but we have group numbers along here so we have one two so we have three I'm gonna run out of space here okay that's three that's four we have five here we know the oxygen is six we have seven then we have eight Okay, so it's a little bit messy, but you get the idea. Um, so we have group numbers 1, 2, and then 3 to 8 as we move along the columns, okay? So the maximum oxidation number of any element is its group number. Okay, so that means the maximum oxidation number of oxygen is plus 6. Okay, but very rarely is that going to happen. When we go back to the first rule, we realize that's the case because usually, based on where oxygen is on the periodic table, usually oxygen is going to be the most electronegative element in any compound. Okay, for this reason, usually we're going to assign its oxidation number first and we're going to end up with a minus two oxidation number on the oxygen atom. Okay, but however, it's good to know that the maximum oxidation number we can have on a uh, oxygen molecule is in fact plus six. Okay, and the same with hydrogen, it cannot have an oxidation number greater than plus one. Okay, so that's kind of just more of a condition that can sort of help us check when we've done things correctly. Okay, but these are basically the two steps. Okay, we do the most electronegative elements first. We assign them their, their oxidation numbers first, okay, depending on uh, whatever their, their charge is when they form an ion. In this case, oxygen forms an oxide ion with a charge of 2 minus, and therefore we get an oxidation number of minus 2. And then we fill in the rest such that the, uh, the sum of the oxidation numbers of the rest of the atoms in the compound is, uh, is equal to the net charge of the compound. Okay, and I'll do a few examples. Examples are pretty crucial on this topic, so you really understand how to go about uh, figuring out the, the oxidation numbers of all the atoms in a compound.